You know, I've built a lot of tanks on this channel in the past, some of which proved to be very successful and were groundbreaking, others proved to be design evolutionary dead ends. However, there's one tank that was so innovative, so impressive, that even the designer quit partway through because he felt it was too powerful for any army to have. Which tank design could I possibly be talking about? Well, there can be only one. And that would be the Tunk. Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for the Tunk. This model here was built for my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. However, like I frequently mention in these build videos, I often take on commission build projects from models ranging between 135th scale and 16th scale. For availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at EastCoastArmory.com. This model here is a bit unique compared to the other models that I frequently done model showcase videos on, where those models are generally static plastic model kits that I build mostly out of the box or I tweak around the edges in a few locations. This one here is a bit different because this one here is 100% scratch built. Or I think is it safe to say to call this one a kit bash? Don't know offhand, but anyway, we'll be going over the components that went into crafting the model that we have in this video. To kick off this video, let's go ahead and take a step back to when the project was first started to get a good idea on the components which were utilized to build the model that we have here. And here's the model at the project start. In order to craft such a unique and super powerful wonder weapon as the Tonk is, I'm going to have to go ahead and scratch build it because, well, none of the plastic model companies have the balls to actually produce the kit themselves because they are terrified of how powerful this vehicle actually is, even in miniature format. Well, I shouldn't say scratch build, more or less kit bash, but regardless, here go the components I'm going to be using in order to craft this model. Starting with the model's running gear, the model I'm going to utilize a set of M48 Patton row wheels. This set here is a spare from a 135th scale Dragon M103A1 kit that I did a number of years ago. And with the way that kit is laid out, you are going to have plenty of spare parts. It's also important to point out that the real Tonk utilizes row wheels from the M60 which are of course the cast aluminum ones, but sadly I do not have any of those parts on hand, but it doesn't matter because this one here is going to be the Tonk A1. The A1 version of the Tonk actually had M48 row wheels, as opposed to the A2 and A3, which is what that rare photograph of the real Tonk is. That one, they swapped that out for M60 row wheels, just to keep parts commonality. The next runner is going to be the tur components that we have here. The Tonk has what appears to be an M60A1 mini turret cupola, but that's actually not the case. See, the Tonk's turret was casted in this, this mystery metal that to this day we still don't know what it is. So for the model here, I'm going to be utilizing this M60A1 mini cupola because it's the closest thing we have to the real Tonk. The turret itself, this runner, you'll notice it's Academy Tooling. This was left over from the AFV Club CM11 build that I did a number of years ago. If we recall from that video, that kit has a lot of spare parts left over because you need to mix parts from the M60A1 as well as the Academy M48A5 as well as some other parts that AFV Club threw into that kit in order to mix it up to give you the CM11. Well, I have these spare parts here, so these look to be a perfect candidate for this build at hand. And the last bit of runner that we have here is the tracks. And God, I really can't believe I'm saying this. For the model's tracks, oh boy. For the model's tracks, I'll be utilizing a set of individual link and, oh God, I can't believe I'm saying this in one sentence. Individual link and left. Individual link and left. Uh, do I really, do I really have to for this? <sighs> I'll be utilizing a set of individual link and length tracks for this build. Hang on. Ah! Oh god, it burns. Ah, and my mouth still feels dirty. Anyway, yes, all jokes aside, for this build, hell has officially frozen over because I will be utilizing a set of individual link and lengths for this build. This set here is left over from an old Eshi M60A1 build that I did a number of years ago. Which on that build I galaxy brained it by swapping these out for a set of workable track links. But for this important build here, I'm going to be sucking it up and going with the individual link and length. Also you notice this pattern here is the octagonal link version. Of course the 
one surviving photograph that we have of the Tonk has a double chevron type track, but this is a different version of the Tonk, so I could go ahead and utilize the, the octagonal pattern. With all that out of the way, I could go ahead and start assembly of this build. Before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around this model. And this vehicle here is none other than the infamous Tonk. The Tonk is a super experimental secret wonder weapon designed by the US military in the 1960s. This vehicle here was so secretive that it never receives a T or an XM designation, just like many of the other experimental programs done by the US military. This program was so secretive that it just got the colloquial nickname, Tonk. This was done in a way to elude this vehicle from the spying eyes of the Russians of the period. Literally, no one knows what the armor protection is or what the main firepower was. It's speculated that it had a railgun on it of some sort, and it could go in excess of about 250 miles an hour. Because the vehicle utilized many components from off-the-shelf vehicles of the period, it was going to cut down on supply chain as well as also still keep the vehicle as secretive as possible. One spy photograph is known to exist of this vehicle, and it's reportedly taken at Area 51. It's supposedly kept next to the UFOs that are on base that Bob Lazar was talking about. And I'm pretty sure I don't have to say this, but in case anyone is still following along, uh, this was an April Fool's prank, and I am completely full of crap right now and making this stuff up as I go along. <laughs> What this vehicle really is, is that it's actually based on an internet meme that's been circulating around the internet now for a number of years. If you've ever been to any ch tank chat rooms or modeling forums, chances are really good you've encountered the Tonk once or twice. What the Tonk really is, it's actually an Italian war memorial, and it's located somewhere in some small little town in central Italy. To construct this memorial, the Italians went ahead and recycled many parts from the M60A1s, which would include the mini turret cupola, as well as a section of chevron pattern track, not to mention, of course, the cast aluminum wheels. It's also at this time I want to give a special shout out to the YouTube channel Cone of Arc. His series called Curse by Design is actually one that's really interesting and I watch it from time to time and I recommend my viewers to check it out too, if they don't already do so. One of his videos he actually dedicated on the Tonk where he went ahead and did the legwork and actually went ahead and traced it down and found the thing on Google Maps. In the video he goes into more depth about the journey that he went through in order to track this thing down and I went ahead and want to just give him a shout out just because it's really because of that video it kind of motivated me to make this model here and also to make the video that we're watching right now. Starting with the model's running gear, the track that you see on this model is the same Eshi individual Lincoln Link track that I mentioned before and as predicted the tracks were the hardest thing on this entire model to build. Even in this small little segment that we have here, the tracks were a royal pain to get to fit together. Not just having them indexed properly, but have them indexed evenly, and then even have them wrap around the wheel was a chore indeed. The way this was done was I actually had the wheels used as a mold, or a pattern I should say, and I went ahead and assembled them accordingly in this type of format, where I add a link, add a drop of glue, let the glue thoroughly dry, and then continue the steps. The wheels were not connected to the track at this time. The wheels are painted separately, and then they were mounted to the track after everything was already painted and weathered. So basically the track was this little oval piece that we see here, with no wheels present during the painting and weathering process. In order to secure the wheels to the track, I had to do something a little bit different than my normal routine. The wheels cannot just simply be popped in place because again of the way the track is assembled. So the wheels since they are in halves they were assembled one at a time where I take one half of the wheel I glue it to its appropriate location let it sit and then on the opposite side I just drop the other unit and line it up in its appropriate location. On the dragon wheel there's a small little half moon found on one side and a corresponding hole found on the other in order to get them to index appropriately. However I found for this build here I just simply removed the half moon altogether which made the assembly and index of the wheels a bit easier. Well, there's nowhere else to go on this model but up, so that now brings us to the turret. The turret itself is the Academy turret that I mentioned before. The only mod that I made to it was the neck that descends downward from the original tooling had to have been eliminated. That neck was required in order to secure this to the turret of the M60A1. 
Other things to mention was that I made the hatch fully functional because, well, you know, why not? This was very easily done on these Academy and Tamiya pattern of M60s. All you got to do is with a pin vise, drill a small hole through the, the hinges that we have here and just insert a small metal sewing pin. Once this is done, the hatch is fully operational, as you see here. For the remainder of the details, namely the muzzle, or I should say the front tarplin, this was an Eshi component. The original Academy one, I wasn't able to find in my spare parts bin. I probably could have found it, but rather than having to dig through all of those parts, luckily I had the Eshi runner lying around, so the piece was simply mounted in place. To mount the Eshi component to the Academy turret required a slight modification, and that involves the front portion that we have here. On the Eshi kit, this little plate here is integrally molded to this front portion of the tarpaulin, and this was going to cause some problems with the mounting. The original Eshi one was just simply filed away. Once the material was removed, the tarpaulin just fell directly into place. To make matters even more interesting, the machine gun that we have here is the Academy version, and oddly enough, it just mounted directly to the Eshi tooling without any modifications. Even the indexing holes lined up absolutely perfectly. The other Eshi details to mention are the Periscope box. The Academy one originally does have this piece, but just like with the other parts that I mentioned, I wasn't able to really track it down in my spare parts bin. So the Eshi one was a direct drop-in replacement. It literally just dropped directly in place without any changes being made. The last Eshi components that I need to mention are the little lift rings here that we have on the cupola. The Academy kit did originally have the provisions for mounting these components in place, but again, the Eshi ones were on the same runners that I mentioned before and were just dropped into their appropriate locations without, again, astonishingly, any other mods being needed to be made. Moving on to paint and the markings, well, there's no markings to discuss, so we'll just exclusively refer to the paint and the weathering. The real tonk is just a single color of green. Obviously it's heavily faded and weathered because it's been sitting outside for a number of years. And for the model here, I wanted to capture as much of that as possible. For the green, I used a slightly different shade than I generally use on my builds. I went with this time a Tamiya color called Field Gray, and then I added the various washes on it to get it to the condition that you see it here. Overall, I'm really happy in how it turned out with the shade. In fact, I have some ideas to use with the same technique on other potential builds that I have in the lineup, so stay tuned for that. For the track, I went with my tried and true technique of weathering American AFE tracks. The metal sections are all painted to represent a rusty type coloring, while the rubber sections are painted to, well, look like worn rubber. If anyone have ever seen my other builds, you'll know exactly which sections are metal and which ones are rubber on these particular tracks. At the end of the day, I'm really happy in how this one turned out. I kind of had a rough idea in my head on what the project was going to look like, but actually having it sitting here in the flesh right now, it's a bit surreal, to say the least. All in all, this was a really fun project from the original conception during the execution, and yes, even the filming of this video were all really, really enjoyable. This build here really does show the power of internet memes, and, well, in case anyone was wondering, yes, meme magic is real. And I guess this is a good way to end off all of the videos I'm going to be posting on April Fool's Day. And with that, that wraps up this model showcase video for the 135th scale Tonk. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content being small scale model showcase videos like this guy over here or the other larger scale project update videos that frequently get posted to this channel. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more photographs of this particular build, if you want to see them, or the other smaller and larger scales that frequently get posted to this channel. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks again, and I'll catch you guys again on the next one.